And thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis, and we've got a wonderful program for you today. For those of you approaching midlife and you're finding you need something to do, something exciting, well, today's your day. Joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program is our guest, Jill Connor Brown. She's going to talk with us about a wonderful group that is now worldwide with several thousand chapters around the world, and that is the Sweet Potato Queens. And I'd like to welcome Jill Connor Brown to the Beyond 50 radio program. Jill, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. We're in the middle of our supreme festival that we have once a year, and uh, so you just ought to be here. I'm in Jackson, Mississippi. It is sun is shining, it's about 70 degrees, and there are, I don't know how many tens of thousands of incredible women in town <laughs> with uh-huh. rhinestones and feathers and sequins dripping off everywhere. Yeah, that sounds like fun now. Is Sarah Palin down there joining you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen her. <laughs> haven't seen her yet. Huh? I'm going to kind of head up the GOP convention there. Now let's talk about what the uh, Sweet Potato Queens are and how all this got started. I started the Queens in 1982 when my friend Malcolm White, who was then a local restaurateur and entrepreneur, decided for no apparent reason that Jackson, Mississippi needed a St. Patrick's Day parade. It's not like there's a whole bunch of Irish people here or anything, although I am one, (laughs) but purely coincidental. And um, Daddy always brought us up. He kind of put spectating on a sin level and said if there was anything going on that you were in any way capable of participating in, you had almost a moral obligation to do so and that you should do what you would wish you had done when you are 50. Now, mm-hmm. at the time that I heard that, I was probably about eight, and 50 just sounded like, you know, good God, who would even want to live that long? Right. <laughs> so my whole life, whenever I had a choice to make, I figured whatever it was, I would wish I had done it was when I was 50, so I did. And now, having left 50 in the dirt some time ago, I have moved that up to the nursing home. What will I wish I had done when I get to the nursing home? And as far as I can tell, Nobody goes to the nursing home wishing they had served on a few more committees or vacuumed their house a few more times. <laughs> so now, how did this all catch on? I mean, it's you got uh, chapters worldwide. That's quite amazing. It is. It Well, it grew organically just as a local festival for the first few years. So, as I said, I started it in 1982. My first book, The Sweet Potato Queen's Book of Love, was published in 1999 by Random House. And in that, I published my website. Uh, sweetpotatoqueens.com and said, you know, email me, I'll write you back, and that also you're invited to come and be the queen of whatever you choose. This is a people's parade. As far as I know, it's the only parade of its kind where anybody can participate. And so I said, come be the queen of whatever you choose. And people would write me and say, is this real? Is there really somebody there? Is there really a parade? Can I really be in it? (laughs) I said, yes. And so first book came out in 99, and in 2000, there were people from 22 states. When I saw a sign that said, North Dakota loves the sweet potato queens, I said, you know, who knew there were people in North Dakota and that they could get out? (laughs) (laughs) That anybody in North Dakota, being a first-time humor writer myself, that anybody in North Dakota found, bought, read, and liked my book was miracle enough for me, but that based on nothing else but that, that they took time off work, bought plane tickets, hotel rooms, restaurants, whatever, and outfits, and came to Jackson, Mississippi to dress up funny and walk down the street, tells me that they are highly motivated, easily led, lots of disposable income, and possibly too much time on their hands, but they are my people, and I love Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, because I'm on your website, and I see that you have uh, spud studs. What's that all about? Yes, the, the men who love us and who get it, uh, are, are spud studs. And, uh, so that is the thing, one of my favorite things about the queendom is that we have not found a line that we do not cross. We have men and women, gay and straight, young and old, black and white, rich and poor, drunk and sober, married, single, whatever else you got. I've got people on scooters. I've got blind people. I have the ashes of a dead woman. There was a queen in Arizona <laughs> who loved the parade more than anything, and she, she died, and a friend of hers got some of her ashes and boxed them up special and brought them to me, and so Dutchie rides on the float every year. And so when I say there is no line, there is no line that we do not cross. And I, I do love that. Mm-hmm. Now, what are some of the activities besides the parades that you find yourself getting involved in? Well, our whole thing for the weekend, for this weekend, and it, it, it's a long weekend, and it gets longer every year. Uh, everything that we do has a fundraising arm tied to it for the Blair E. Batson Children's Hospital 
which is the only hospital in the state of Mississippi where any child can be treated regardless of ability to pay. And so we, um, everything that we do, and we add goofy stuff every year to, um, to just raise money for the, for the hospital. So the marching fee goes to the hospital, and then I have my crowns. I have enormous crowns. So all my jewelry is made for me by Larry Verba in New York. He makes all the jewelry for the Metropolitan Opera does all the Broadway shows. If you've seen Wicked, he did all of that jewelry. And he makes these fabulous crowns for me. And so I have one made especially every year for this event. And we raffle it. We sell raffle tickets so everybody has a chance. And all of that money goes to Batson. We have Jello raffling, <laughs> which is not actually raffling, but we do have a thousand gallons of Jello that we, the Sweet Potato Queens, get in. And for a five dollar donation to Bats and you can get in the jello with us <laughs> and have your picture made and and our our photographer, our event photographer was a sick baby himself and spent a lot of time in a children's hospital. So he donates twenty percent of all of his sales to Batson. So everything that we do has a, a fundraising arm tied to it. And it's just all, you know, silly stuff for fun, but it, it does raise awareness for the hospital and also money. This year we're focusing on wheelchairs, That mm-hmm. just a basic child's wheelchair, which just the term child's wheelchair makes my blood run cold, but mm-hmm. just the basic chair is $900. And they also need what's called tilt-in-space chairs that for the most severely disabled or, or critically ill children that literally cannot be moved and their, their bodies have to be tilted to certain angles for them to even survive. And these chairs are five thousand dollars a piece, and they no one is ever turned away or denied anything that they need uh, from this hospital. And so we're trying to buy as many chairs as possible this year. Now, tell me something, Joe. When you started the Sweet Potato Queens back in 1982, if I remember, you said is was it for the specific reason of being able to raise awareness and money, or was it? something you just started for fun and it kind of morphed into what it is right today. at that time at that time it was purely to entertain myself and uh, and actually still is it's a lot more fun than bunko myself. isn't it yeah <laughs> and it's uh, the outfits are much more attractive but the uh <laughs> since we've added the, the but we've been raising money for batson for about 15 years now and it's uh it just makes it that much more fun because you you realize that you're when you go and visit the hospital, which I do several times a year, and I mean, there are children who literally live at this hospital, but they are too sick to be cared for anywhere else, and they live at Blair E. Batson. And, you know, it, it makes it pretty easy to, <laughs> to raise money and to write checks for them. Have you been able to get the attention of our newly elected president, uh, Barack Obama, about what you're doing and what you're doing with this hospital here? Well, I have not. I have not attempted to bother our president at this point. He's he's getting his groove going and it has plenty on his plate. At the <laughs> yeah. moment. But I'm trying to maintain my my own deal w- without his assistance at the moment because it's anything I can do to pitch in to help on that front. Fine, but and, yeah. Uh, well, I just know that, you know, that's one of the areas that he was promising to help work on was overhauling the health care system. And here you guys are literally doing it in a very unique and, and wonderful way. And it just it's encouraging to think that when people hear your story, you know, just what an impact you can make in your community, no matter how crazy it seems to be able to help right. others. Everybody can, can do something. And mm-hmm. um, we're, we have temporary tattoos that, this year that we're uh, we're selling for a dollar, all the money goes to the hospital, and then our spud studs will install them for you. And one of our spud studs is, is Randall Wallace, who wrote Braveheart, mm-hmm. and we were soldiers, and Man in the Iron Mask, and he's a, a good personal friend, and he comes every year and marches in the parade in his Wallace clan kilt, and so he's kilt boy for us, <laughs> and uh, he is, of course, wildly popular with the women, and so... They are willing to, I mean, they will buy, you know, $50 worth of tattoos just to have Kilt Boy install them for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all the money goes to the hospital. Our motto, and we say it real Southern, is any sign for the children. <laughs> now, Jill, for, with the chapters that are around the country as well as around the world, what kind of projects have you heard there that these different groups are involved in? 
they're, they are very civic minded. Uh, mm-hmm. they are, we're very involved. I speak at any number of cancer organizations, breast cancer, children's cancer. I do things for children's hospitals, other places, for women's shelters, battered women's shelters. Um, and uh, but the the queens, yes, we do. They all like to have a good time, but they uh, are very mindful of need around them. That is that's just amazing. What's one of the? Uh, I guess you're all kind of having fun being crazy. Do they get wilder, like in say Britain? Is do you have chapters in Britain, England, Australia, places like that? Everywhere in 22 countries, there are. 22 um, countries, wow. 11, there are 11 women here from Indonesia this year and from New Guinea. And there are, um, there, yes, there are several women from the United Kingdom. There are some here from Costa Rica. They're, they're from everywhere mm-hmm. and from all 50 states. Mm-hmm. Now, as you were saying earlier in the program, it's it doesn't really matter uh, whether you're man, woman, child, on and on and on, that there are no lines that you're afraid to cross. Because one of the questions that I had from uh, the producer standpoint was what kind of women join, but it sounds to me like anybody who's just interested in getting involved in what you're doing has a place. A good time. Play is the most important, one of the most important aspects, and I think that's the chord that it has struck universally is that I... I give people not only uh, permission to play, but an invitation. Mm -hmm. And university studies, actual university studies have shown that play is as important to our health and well-being as food, clothing, and shelter. Mm -hmm. And the dressing up funny and acting stupid like we do makes it possible to step outside yourself and become somebody else for just a little while that doesn't have a worthless ex-husband or a child in therapy or breast cancer or whatever it is that you're dealing with. And it makes you just a little bit stronger spiritually to go back and tote that load when you have to. And in my experience, the load will be there when you go back. No one will come and get it while you're gone playing. Well, that's for sure, Jill. I know <clears throat> we've done many programs and we talk. In fact, we have one person, if you're ever interested in getting in touch with, uh, who is a, a laughter guru. And basically what she does is she goes around and gets people to laugh. And it's, it has tremendous, tremendous health benefits, just like we're talking about. And the easier you can get somebody laughing, obviously, if you're dressing up as a sweet potato queen, the, right. the faster you are to healing everybody around you, it seems like. Yes, we find it to be very, to have very powerful um, healing and restorative uh, effects on people. Now, here's something that I'm finding interesting here is that there's an album, Bras Across the Mississippi. Yes. We, uh, that was with the American Cancer Society, and I got involved with that project this year. At, at the very last minute, I just happened to hear about it, and a radio station that I do a lot of work with here are in our Clear Channel family. And I, I, Jan Michaels is, is my DJ friend. I called her, I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, we're just trying to get enough bras to cross the Mississippi River <laughs> at Vicksburg in order to, you know, to raise awareness. It was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and... I said, well, honey, why didn't you tell me? And I sent out a, a mass email, and she got, I think she's still getting boxes of bras. We've got enough bras. <laughs> just about run the length of the Mississippi for next year. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, so it's, uh, and, and then the bras that are, that are in good condition then are uh, used for women's shelters because uh, a lot of times the women who go to these shelters leave in the middle of the night with literally nothing. And... Uh, so it's a, it's again it's it's a funny thing, but it serves a, a very real and serious need. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing, Joe, because it sounds like the sweet potato queens literally don't find a line that they're unwilling to cross. Because you're not just limited to saying, you know, or advocating, you know, for cancer, breast cancer. It's just one thing. It sounds like you're interested in anywhere that you can help. This is what this group seems to be dedicated to. Yes, absolutely. That and and you know, especially. If you're feeling bad yourself, the best way to feel better is to do something for somebody else. I agree, definitely. <laughs> Just like Patch Adams, the best way out of depression is to help somebody out of theirs. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, I understand that you're an author of several books. Uh, the newest one, as I understand it, is American Thighs. Tell us about that. Yes, American Thighs, The Sweet Potato Queen's Guide to Preserving Your Assets, is my eighth <laughs> book. And uh, I have been very fortunate. I've had two actually number one New York Times bestsellers. I've been very, oh, very fortunate good. and uh, tied on every dime I make. I'm profoundly grateful for the success that I've had. And 
it's uh, the the humor in my books is the, the vehicle by which the greater message is delivered. But if all you get from me is a good laugh, then I have served you well because uh, life is hard on a good day for most of us. That is just a that is just so much fun. I know you know one of my first original questions was going to be you know how are you folks different from the Red Hat Society, but. I can see that there's a glaring difference between what <laughs> you two are. I mean, to, you know, they're yeah. a fun group, but I yeah, and I actually spoke We're with their queen. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually <laughs> want to agree with you. They seem kind of stiff and ready for tea, and Weird. not that I'm downplaying I that group. Have, I mean, they they I like that a lot. No, of fun, not at but, all, not yeah. at all. And I do have a lot of crossovers. I have some who come with their red hats and they put their tea arrows in the hats. But I mean, most of us would rather wear rhinestones than than red mm-hmm. and purple, but. The um, it's I do have a lot of crossovers and the the age I mean I think the youngest that we have we're a lot more inclusive age wise the youngest that we have would be in utero and the oldest that in we utero have, huh yeah, <laughs> the oldest get them before have, they're in the crib I like right. that <laughs> the the oldest that we have who marches every year uh, is a woman named Aunt Faye she's everybody's Aunt Faye from Midland Texas. They don't even get her a new T-shirt. She has a yellow T-shirt, and it says, I'm Aunt Faye, I'm 92, slash 93, slash 94. She will be 96 this year. Wow. She marches the whole route, and it's the people who come with her all have shirts that say their yellow T-shirt that say, I'm with Aunt Faye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it is, uh, it, and we all want to be Aunt Faye when we grow up. And um, she is just uh, a miraculous person and a joy to be around. That's fantastic. We're going to go to the phone lines. It looks like we have a question or a comment from Janice in North Dakota. It looks like Janice, you're on the Beyond 50 radio show. Do you have a question or comment for Jill? Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, I love your group. I was wondering, is um, is there a way we can uh, get a costume like yours? (laughs) Our outfits that are heavily augmented, in strategic locations. We have proven in these outfits that it is possible to please everyone all the time. But they are specially made for us, and so you would have to, you know, have they are, they are architectural wonders. The little girl who made our current outfits, actually there's a, um, there was an Emmy award-winning show produced by our public broadcasting station here, and they interviewed her, and she's a little tiny girl uh, Catherine Gilmore from, from Atlanta, and she's a little tiny girl with a little tiny voice, and she was excited. She said, I actually had to use the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> and, cons- <laughs> and we're just all going, now, I remember there was a Pythagorean theorem, but I, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you what it was. <laughs> Somehow it was employed in making our outfits. So they, they are uh, quite complicated. Uh, um, but very uh, fitting, you must agree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you say you have men who uh, join, what are their meetings like? Because it all seems well. Like it's- there are, um, as I said, there we there are no lines, so we have we have gay men and straight men, and so the straight men are our spud studs, and they and well, some of the gay men are spud studs as well. They coat and fetch. Anybody who coats and fetches for us is a spud stud, <laughs> and. Uh, so they they have a, uh, they are in a, a servile capacity and happy to do so, but um, then you know they they will help with it with any of the projects that we have going and um, it's it's just fun. I mean there there are a lot of men in town this weekend because they have found out where all the fabulous women are, <laughs> and uh, so it's uh, it's just a great time. You should be here. Oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking of joining for our area. You should. You should form your own chapter. That way you get to be the boss queen and make up all the rules for your chapter. And what do you do in within your club? Like the what is a only, typical the only rule that we have is whatever I say, whenever I say it, as fast as you can with a big grin on your face. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, we get together and, you know, cook and I mean it's just, it's just women getting together having fun and sometimes we have husbands and boyfriends and sometimes we don't and that's okay oh. uh, and we do you know the people will call us we'll we'll go make appearances for different charities or we'll go do breast cancer walks and um, do things with our churches or it's you know we just have a good time 
Well, thank you a lot, Janice, for your question there to uh, to Jill. Now, uh, what are your upcoming events? Some special things that you have planned uh, for your group. Oh, so let's say this weekend. That will be a, a major star in my crown. Next week, I will be at the Tennessee Williams Literary Festival in New Orleans. Oh, very good. Um, in April, I'm speaking at a fundraiser in Philadelphia for the Museum of Art, and that is as far in advance as I know what my schedule so is. So far in advance as we need to know. <laughs> yes, at the, getting this weekend, because this started yesterday, and we'll go through uh, Sunday, and it is it is nonstop. I've, I've been, this morning I was on television at at, uh, at 6, so I had to I had to get up at 4 to, to get to the where I needed to be for TV, and we've already had had the Big Hat Lunch. If you look on the website, you can see pictures of past Big Hat Lunches, and there mm-hmm. are some incredible hats that, that show up, and we're on our way to a margarita party, and then we have the Sweet Cat Queen Ball tonight, and um, then we have the Afterglow after that. I'm, I'm pretty glowed out by then, but there are quite a number <laughs> that are still glowing, and, uh, and tomorrow is the parade. I have a couple getting married on my float this year All right, in the on. course of the parade, so while the during the parade, they will get married in front of the governor's mansion, which is the our governor's mansion is the oldest executive mansion in the country after the White House. And mm-hmm. so, uh, it's a couple from Sarasota, Joni Cox and Dr. Jeffrey Ellis will get married on our float. <laughs> and oh, that's so fun. all of the all of the queen wannabes will be. We'll probably have a Guinness Book of Records for the num- most number of bridesmaids in a wedding. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> that's great. I notice on your website that <clears throat> I, I hope that this number is correct. That you have a total of five thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight registered chapters. It's great. Yes, it grows every day. <clears throat> okay, so how many people usually constitute a chapter? Is it one person, twenty? How many is it usually? It varies. I mean, the Memphis Blues Queens probably have fifty or seventy-five, and then there are groups of two and three, and groups of okay. twenty. I mean, it's it's totally, um, you know, it's all over the map. Oh, well, that's great. Now, how can people find out more about Sweet Potato Queens? Obviously, listening to the Beyond 50 radio program is one way, but how they can get more information about possibly joining and what they need to do. Uh, SweetPotatoQueens.com, and they can write to me. They can email me at hrhjill at SweetPotatoQueens.com, and that address is on the website as well. I do answer every email personally. I will not be answering any this weekend, but... (laughs) <laughs> Other than that, I answer. You got to get your glow first. back. <laughs> yes, and they can buy my books, and it, it is against the rules to loan my books or to borrow my books. I have massive plastic surgery needs that will never be met if people are borrowing books. Everyone must buy their own. Oh. And, um, but there are eight of them, and uh, starting with the Sweet Potato Queen's Book of Love, and then ending with the most current one is American Thighs, the Sweet Potato Queen's Guide to Preserving Your Assets. It's about hopefully it, it is. Um, some comic relief for those of us who are already well along on our inexorable trudge toward geezerdom and uh, a cautionary tale for those um, starting out. In my opinion, if you're under 40, you're larva. <laughs> so, um, life really does begin at 40. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I know we've discovered on this show many, many times people, they look at us and say, you know, you don't seem like you guys are 50 years old. Well, we're not, but by the time we get there, we're going to be pretty experienced about yeah. the stories that we've been hearing doing the program for the last right. five years. I'll tell you, it's it's wonderful that groups like the Sweet Potato Queens are out there because, again, I think the world too many times takes itself way too serious, way and then those serious people just aren't getting much done, it seems like. Right. Yes, I think, uh, you know, laughter and prayer could cure pretty much much anything. Agreed. Well, definitely, Jill Connor Brown, it was a pleasure to have you here on the program today. Nothing oh, like huh? talking with the lead alpha queen. I like that <laughs> very much. And, uh, and that this is a group that anybody can join, and, you know, all it takes is, you know, one hand getting together yeah. with many hands to get a lot of big things done, and, and yep. I certainly applaud you guys for doing that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> New back. Go ahead and give out your website uh, again one more time. www.sweetpotatoqueens.com. Thank you very much, and it was a Thank pleasure you. to talk with you today. Thanks, you darling. I appreciate it. You Bye-bye. bet. Thank you. And so there you go, folks. Get out there and have some fun in life because look at what the fun's getting. It's getting things done. I want to thank you all for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today, and especially our guest, Jill Connor Brown, for joining us here to talk with us about the Sweet Potato Queens. Also, would like to <clears throat> 
thank our following sponsor for making this uh, program possible, and that is the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center. About 25% of Americans over the age of 60 have type 2 diabetes, a condition many believe to be irreversible. Gabriel Cousins, MD, the founder of the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, offers a 21-day reversing diabetes naturally program that is medically supervised. Imagine the freedom of no longer living with the disease. As an example, a 76-year-old man with type 2 diabetes went on the program. By the second day, his blood sugar dropped from 224 to the mid-80s where it has remained. His wife also did the program, and together they switched on to a new level of joy, health, and sexual vitality in their relationship. Join the Tree of Life family that is located within a majestic valley in Arizona to experience transformative whole-person wellness. Call today, 520-394-2520, or visit www.treeoflife.nu. I want to thank you for tuning in today. You've been listening to the Beyond 50 Radio program. Please visit us at our website at beyond50radio.com and sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter and also check out Beyond 50's blog as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, live your day past halfway.